Hey there, Game and Outsider listeners. On this week's episode, we're discussing in-game hint systems and whether or not we're annoyed by them. We even touch on how frequently we use online guides to help us get through the tough spots. You'll also hear my impressions of Evil West, which has you fighting vampires in the Old West. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community, which can be found at thegamingoutsider.com. It is Sunday, November 27th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my good friends, Mr. Zach Parkerson. What's up? What's up, man? And Miss Alyssa White. How you doing? I am okay, but looking at myself through this webcam, I look a little bit dead, so <laughs> forgive me. No what? one else can see me besides you guys. You do not look dead to me. You look just fine, Melissa. You were cutting yourself <laughs> short. Well, her name's Alyssa. What did I say, Melissa? You definitely said Melissa. Did I? I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't even catch that. <laughs> oh, I, well... Apologies. Thank you, Zach. You are my knight in shining armor. It's oh, wow. A little you. tired. I was up late last night. I apologize. Uh, real quick, before we get into the games we've been catching up on, we got some uh, kudos or congratulations. We had our monthly giveaway this past month. Uh, we actually did two games. We had a copy of God of War Ragnarok on PS5, which actually went to Logan Honigford, Kevin Honigford's son. So congratulations to him for winning that copy. And then we also had a copy of Sonic Frontiers, which went to uh, Mr. Aaron Peterson over at the Hollywood Outsider. So congratulations. Uh, stay tuned for our December giveaway. I have a feeling Callisto Protocol makes sense for the month of December. Um, that or, or um, well, Midnight Suns might be good because, you know, it's Marvel and uh, I feel like people are cautious of it. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, that's true. That's an idea. I know. That's, you know, at the, we're, we're talking Sausage Factory stuff right now, though. So. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely get a, uh, a post out for our giveaway, and thank you to all of our Patreon contributors uh, that make that possible, because you guys uh, help fund those giveaways, and we really do appreciate it. But let's get into the games we've been catching up on. Uh, I'll, you know, who do we start with? Who's been gone the longest? Zach, you weren't here last week, right? We were both here was. last week. Yeah, we were both. This is the same crew. I know you're tired, Scott. I am tired. Let's, ladies first. It was Alyssa. supposed to be CB this week, but I am not CB. I am sorry to disappoint everyone listening. <laughs> I would hope by now you would know that this is not CB. Nobody's disappointed, Alyssa. <laughs> yeah. I'll like you better. Definitely. I don't know about that. I'm sure CB has a group of fans just like Zach does. Oh uh, Yeah, I had like three of them. Uh, Alyssa, so what <laughs> games have you been catching up on? <laughs> well, I did play Somerville on Game Pass, mm -hmm. and it was a really unique, um, just kind of puzzle adventure game. Very short, a little under four hours, and I had a good time with it. It definitely reminded me of Inside, but it's not as good. And okay. I think it is from some of the same developers as Limbo and Inside, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but I think it's, it's just. A... Oh, go I'm ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interject. I just, I think it was their art director who left and then made his own studio. I want to say. Mm. That sounds about. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. And, and you can definitely feel that. Inside is a game I want to go back and replay. That ending, man. I feel like I need to as well. I feel like I need to because I didn't like it that much. Oh, really? But I love Limbo. I've played Limbo a hundred times. Limbo was great. I like Limbo a lot better, but yeah, the ending of, of uh, that, that last, like, I don't know, 15 minutes of Inside was, was yeah, nice. Yeah, see, I thought, oh, I, I thought that was the worst part, but that's fine. I, it's just so unexpected what happens at the yeah. end of that. But Somerville is along that same kind of vein, like 2D puzzle solving. Yeah. Okay. I've heard good and, things about it, but I didn't realize that's what it was. Yeah, it's basically about family. You play mostly as the dad, sometimes as the kid. And it's a mom, dad, kid, dog. Uh, aliens just out of nowhere start attacking the Earth. And you as the dad get separated from your family, but when the dad wakes up from the house falling in, he has electrical powers. But the dog's with him, too. And one thing that made me... My, disappointed me so much. You can't pet the dog. I thought oh, no. he was such a good boy too. They weren't I going for the easy him. Twitter marketing, huh? I know. No, you can't pet the dog. Uh. But you're doing a lot of the same stuff you do, like in Inside. It's not like hard, but a couple of puzzles trick me up. I will say, if you do not like ambiguous endings, oh. this game is not for you. You know, I, I, I feel like Inside was somewhat of an ambiguous ending, and I still enjoyed that, so. That's true. I do think Inside's ending was better than this one, but it still was interesting. It does, you know, require a little bit of thinking mm -hmm. when you're playing it, when you're watching it, but 
it's definitely an interesting game. It was a little bit buggy. I don't know if they've patched it since I've played. I did get stuck twice and have to, like, shut my game down and go back in because I was just stuck in the environment. Oh. But other that than that, I a mean... a long time. You can't even, like, reload I know, I a was checkpoint. Like, oh. I feel like that's like no checkpoint. every game now. Like, you know, oh, reload checkpoint if you get stuck, and then I just go back to wherever I left off. But that wasn't here, huh? Not when I played it. I just had to exit out of the game and go back in. Interesting. All right. Somerville. I uh, may have to add that one to my list as well, because I, I I love those kinds of games. But anything else you've been catching up on? I also started Vampire Survivors, yes. which I know Zach has been continuing to play that this week as well. And yeah. just like Zach, the first couple of runs, I'm like, okay, what? Well, what the hell did Scott tell me to play? <laughs> but I kept playing because I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep playing and see if it gets better. And I did about six runs. I, I was in a limited time space. But I've, like starting at the third run, I started to get it. Mm-hmm. And I started to be like, oh, I need to do this and this and this. I unlocked... I don't know if there's more than four characters in this game total. Oh, there's a lot more. I un- okay, I've, I've unlocked four <laughs> characters. And I... Almost survived to 15 minutes. I made it to 14.46 and died. And I was like, no! I had 14 seconds left. <laughs> now, have but, you... have you st- What have you learned so far, you know, in terms of how the game works mechanically? What have you uncovered? Uh, I've learned if you shoot one those statues, you can get some chicken that will replenish your health. Yep, floor chicken. Yeah, floor chicken, or it provides you coins, and then you can use the coins to um, get uh, uh, weapons upgrades. And then I haven't learned too much, apparently. Okay. <laughs> but I've done a little bit. But Zach, you know why I'm being vague, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, the revelations start coming fast. I think after yeah. you, once you make your first realization, I guess they they start coming quicker. Yeah. There, there, you've got some fun, exciting things coming up that uh, that that really change the way the game works. And don't and don't get excited. It's nothing story related. It's not like there's any. Yeah. There's no story in this game. It's just there's some mechanical stuff that um, the discovery is very fun. It's really cool. Zach, how how's yours? How's your runs going? I did my first full thirty minutes yesterday. Yeah. Where- and it just automatically kills you at thirty minute mark, I guess, mm-hmm. which uh, you know it was quite a. Oh, I didn't know that. I was, I was so sad, um, but I mean, yeah, that's how you I'm, beat I'm, the level. It's like now done. Oh, okay. Yeah, they just murder you. Um, but I think I, have, I think I have four levels unlocked, and I think about ten characters. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, I've been I've been playing Vampire Survivors uh, most uh, evenings. Yeah, it's good. I've been playing it with my uh, with my partner. It's a great couples game. It turns out Vampire Survivors passing the controller after death and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, Scott, I know your wife loves games, so you might want to invite her. But uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, you get more and more uh, mechanics revealed, right? And it's cool. I guess I don't want to give it away, but, you know, you get an item that kind of gives you more direction in your runs. Yep. And so I made a pretty major revelation there and unlocked a, a new character. And it looked like I got this guy who's got like, dual revolvers that he starts out with it's yeah it's a wild it's a wild ride uh, but it, it does uh it does feel good when you especially because you struggle so much in the game so when you finally get a a build together where you're just like i guess i could just stand still and everyone dies yeah it feels you, pretty you can good get builds that do yeah. that i have a bunch yeah, of our community has posted on facebook videos of them playing it there's the controller sitting there and everything converging on them and just wiping them yeah. out eating them away like like you know a knife through. That's why I did a uh, last night. My my last three minutes of my of my run on Mad Forest, the first map. I uh, I just put down the controller for the last three minutes, and nothing. And it felt so good, doesn't it? <laughs> Which is just a silly feeling about like ah, now that I don't have to play, <laughs> now right, that I yeah. don't really have to do anything, it feels great. But you feel like you but earned it's, it. That's just yeah. Really, well, especially because really cool. it's such a hard. It could be such a hard game, you know. Well, just like how much the game changes from the beginning, where there's like two or three enemies on the screen, and then you're 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 taking out hundreds of them at a time, right? In seconds, it's just like I don't know if I you mean, guys noticed, but it actually counts how many kills you've got each round. Oh yeah, I've noticed. And it easily gets into the ten and twenty thousands on on good runs. Right. It's just great. I mean, at the eleven minute mark on the first level, three hundred skeletons come at you at once. It's absurd. Oh yeah. 
and then that just becomes the norm. <laughs> like you're just like, right. oh, no yeah. big, no big deal now. That's M D bra. So good. Who's your Who's your main character, Scott? Um, it's his name. The, he's the guy that starts with the knives. Um, oh, okay, interesting. The, the name is escaping me, but uh, he's my go-to. But uh, I really don't like the 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 character you start with, and I think they do that on purpose. The guy that has the whip. Because yeah. the oh, whip yeah. is such a frustrating weapon, especially when it's under leveled because it doesn't it only goes in one direction. Once you get it to go in two directions, it's a little bit better. But you know, not being able to attack up or down is just maddening to start out with. So yeah. um but man, when you get that Dude, thing. Garlic, up, garlic is overpowered. That's my big tip. Garlic oh, yeah. is absurd. Mm-hmm. Puts like a little shield around you that Anything it touches just, you know, destroys or attacks. I mean, everything has hit points, so it's not, you know, one hit kill. Right. Well, it kills a lot of enemies in one hit, but if, but it also like knocks people back. Yep. Yep. You know, gives you some breathing room. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. And again, when, when you start seeing what else those weapons do, it just gets glorious and it just gets deeper and deeper. Like there's, there's so much stuff to unlock. I don't know how many achievements you guys have but like my first run i unlocked 14 achievements and i was like man that was pretty cool and i looked it up there's 140 of them i'm like all right i'm a tenth of the way <laughs> through the game um but just like there's little things you get rewarded for whether it be um you know new evolutions or you get new characters or it just it it, it just expands in, in spider webs in such a much more complex game than i ever expected the game to when i first looked at screenshots so glad you guys are enjoying it i was so worried i oversold it but uh yeah so no, i think this is this is an easy like top five game of the year contender which is absurd it, it is i i think i i'm so glad everybody played it because it was it's probably going to be on my list and i i was going to thought i was gonna be the only one but uh now we just got to convince cb to play it because i feel it's like he's the one that's been most resistant to it no reason not to with Game Pass. Yeah, it is still it I is know. still weird on my base Xbox One that it takes so long to load. Yeah, because it's it's such yeah, a weird. Yeah, it's very you know, very quick on. Yeah, it's almost yeah. instantaneous. And no, I mean it's, it's just a must just be a poor optimization because the game could run on any con- you know anything. It right. could run on Super Nintendo probably. You know? uh, there's a lot of moving parts in that. No, man. you're right. Yeah, there's there's a lot of characters <laughs> and particle effects. And each one has its own HP. I mean, think about that. Uh, there's no okay, way. Okay, fine. That... PlayStation. PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> but it would it would do that thing where like the game the frame rate uh, just you know crashes down to like three frames a second. Oh yeah. But when you're but when I was a kid, I was like, oh yeah, slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a flaw, it's a feature. Hell yeah. <laughs> Means you're doing something right in Jeff uh, Force Gemini when you can barely move anymore. You look him in the Matrix. Yes, I yes, for- yes. I forgot how much you love that game, Jet Force Gemini. Hey, Jeff Force Gemini rocks. What about you, Zach? Anything else you've been catching up on? Oh, just more Sonic Frontiers, man. This game uh, continues to amaze. I'm in, the th- I'm in the third region now. Uh, dude, this game's just hype as hell. Like, it's just so fun to to because because you can like 100 percent an island in three or four hours Mm -hmm. it's just instead of when you get to a next one you're like oh i gotta do this again instead it feels like oh i get to do this again get to do more it's just in a new location absolutely it feels good and yeah it just it just has not worn out its welcome in any way so far which is which is great so i don't have a lot to say it's just uh the story is picking up a little bit more but it's really it's just just fun to be the blue blur out there man just collecting stuff yeah it's one of the most fun experiences I've had this year. Just sheer fun. Right. Yeah. Just uncomplicated fun. Yeah. The skill tree. So like I have maxed out the skill tree because it's just useless. But, um, you know, that such is modern gaming, I suppose. Yeah. At least you still get the ability to, you know, like raise your ring count and raise your speed and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's yeah. There. But um, apparently the achievements or trophies are really easy to get to. Like you don't even have to max out everything. Like you only need like thirty percent of the collectibles to get the achievement or trophy, which is weird. Well, look, it looks like looks like there's a trophy for maxing each of the four categories. You know, speed, ring, armor, and defense. But mm-hmm. you can also transfer this, so you really only need to max out one and then just transfer it all to the other one, right? Right. Easy achievement. Yeah, it seems seems like a really easy platinum, but it also kind of it's beginning to feel like uh, games are making easy platinums as almost a marketing feature. Yeah. 
I, I think so you know? too. Yeah, it's become a thing where where like uh, isn't it Rattalaika games? Like their games can be completed in like an hour or something like that. I've heard that people buy them just just for that sheer sake. So it's yeah. almost well, like the it, achievements or... have become diluted. What I was also thinking about, like you think about Sony's first party games, are all such attainable platinums now. Mm-hmm. These should be harder, you know. Like was it like a significant percentage of people got the Spider Man platinum because it's just it's really easy to do so. Well, plus it's super fun just to go back. You just want to keep playing that game. Yeah, I'm not I'm not discounting that it's fun. I'm just saying that I feel like the easy platinum is almost like a marketing move these days. That's yeah. all. Yeah. You know, I'm not. But I'm not you, like, I, look, think back to like good. Gears of War. Remember the achievements on those games? Like, yeah, it was absurd. Of course. Especially the sequel. Seriously, 2.0 was like like two million kills or something like that. Like, <laughs> well, I think I think seriously was like one thousand ranked kills in the first game, uh-huh. and then seriously 2.0 was like ten thousand ranked kills. You're like, oh my god, yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's a huge jump. And it's not like you could boost that. You know what I mean? There's just no right. Way. It, you can only earn that. Well, glad you're digging Sonic Frontiers. I really want to get back to it and finish it, uh, but uh, you know. Something I'm really looking forward to is coming out next week, and a worry is going to take my attention away before I uh, get back to Sonic. So. Yeah, I, Gee, I, I think I have an wonder, idea. Yeah, I wonder what game I, that might be. Which I just got access to Sonic Frontiers 2 because I game share. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean got it for himself, but said I could play it. Um, but yeah, there's that game coming out next week, and I'm still not official God of War, so... <laughs> I don't know when I'll get to it. We, we can I'm say sorry, the game. Kevin. We can, we're all looking forward to Callisto yeah, Protocol, Callisto right? Callisto Protocol. Shh, no, don't give it away, guys. It's a surprise. <laughs> I already said it. Sorry. Are you guys still listening to that audio program, by the I way? I still haven't. I need to. Yeah, yeah, I'm still listening. Great. Good. I mean, it's it's not great. It's good. But it's, uh, it's a fun way to get hyped into the universe, you know? Right. Like, I feel like I actually know a little bit about what's going on, even though they're unashamedly... I was kidding. I was going to say, it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on. Just look at a Wikipedia summary for Dead Space. Yeah, it seems very, very uh, similar, and I am completely okay with that. I mean, it's even got, like, the creepy cult thing, you know? Yep. Like, it's just down to the letter, Dead Space. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, what you call it, the cliffhanger, if you, want to, if you want to even call it that in the last episode, was like, oh, finally, we're going to learn some information about that. Is really cool. Yeah. So if you guys, I, I know I mentioned it on the show a couple weeks ago, but if you were not listening to Helix Station, highly recommend checking that out. And Michael Ironside's voice sounds really cool the way they did it. So he always does, though. It's true. As for me, I finished uh, Gotta Wear Ragnarok finally. It took me about 35 hours. Um, my review is up on the site if you guys are interested in learning more about it. Did you read it, Zach? Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. No, I did. Uh, it's funny. I read yours after writing mine, just to like, like we had a lot of the same things to say. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was saying the same thing when I was reading it. Yeah, whenever you wrote it, but I was like, oh man, this sure does sound similar. Yeah, I I'm mean, not it, saying you know, I'm just, I'm saying the games are similar, therefore the review is similar. Not yeah. that you, yeah, you know. I did enjoy it. I just wish it were shorter. Uh, it's 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 impossible not to recommend it because it plays so well and storytelling is so great what's interesting is i played the game that i'm going to talk about later on in this episode the newer game that i've been playing and you never and, and when you go to a game like that you just realize how good the controls are in god of war when you play something <laughs> something else that just it just feels way more slippery and not realistic but that's not a bad thing about that game but i don't know it is it is really really solid um it just drew out the ending a little bit too long i think as well but Anyway, uh, that is what we've been catching up on. Let's go ahead and jump into the week's news. Speaking of Callisto Protocol, some gamers are upset about its season pass. I'm sure we'll talk about that. Microsoft is getting some resistance regarding their Activision acquisition. And we do have some new deals that have emerged about the Splinter Cell remake. And Dead Island 2 is delayed again. Alyssa? Which story would you like to begin with today? Let's just pull the band-aid off and talk about Callisto Protocol. All right. And the gamers being upset about the season pass. <laughs> I don't know if you how much you guys read into this, but I really kind of think this is silly. Um, it is. I feel like silly. people are getting mad about something that doesn't even exist yet. So so here's what happened. The game 
listed on Steam this past week with a deluxe edition that costs an extra 20 bucks. That edition includes a season pass, skins, game modes, story DLC, and 13 extra death animations. We all know how death animations are, are very much looked forward to in games like this. Uh, fans are upset, basically saying that the full game is being paywalled. So there are parts of the game that are being, being paywalled on, for DLC. Uh, director Glenn Schofield clarified that nothing is being held back and that anything provided in the season pass hasn't been developed yet. <laughs> so, like, they're, they're not holding anything back. They haven't made it yet. Uh, he also said that the extra content has started production due to fan feedback saying they wanted more death animations. So they're actually doing, giving the fans what they wanted, you know, what, they a- what they've what asked the fans for. Are like, but we don't want to pay $20 for it. Yeah, so you want us to do all this extra work, but you don't want to pay for it. And I don't feel sorry for... I'm sorry, I don't feel sorry for you in that case. I mean, it's also that price on consoles as well, an additional $20 for that version. I mean, here's the thing. If they had just oh. released DLC, like new story DLC, and never even mm-hmm. mentioned that there was going to be new death animations, people would have been just Probably completely fine, fine yeah. paying the extra DLC or the season pass for more content to the game. Right? But the thing they're upset about is death animations. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm frustrated by gamers. Yeah, I mean, it's just we live in a world where people pay for color shading on their outfits in games. You know, like, yeah. what? What is That's it? True. A death animation is more work than that. Uh, yeah. I think. I mean, yeah, I think. I think paying for death animations is silly. But I think getting uh, two game modes and a story DLC for twenty bucks feels like a good value Mm -hmm. especially in today's world you know so you know throw in some death animation sure i don't care i mean i would never pay a dollar for a death animation but i you better believe if they charge a dollar per death animation people would eat it up because people uh oh yeah gamers be stupid with that money (laughs) yeah it's also so absurd it is kind of crazy i mean look how much money people spend on cosmetics on on uh fortnite and stuff like that like Oh, right, yeah. it was it was like forty five dollars to get Goku and Vegeta in Fortnite when they Seriously? When had Dragon Ball Z promo. Yeah, like it's that's insane. You know, like it's people people pay uh, left and right for this kind of stuff. Like it's just it is unfortunately the market we have allowed. Yeah. I wish it wasn't horse armor. Be damned. <laughs> Remember how, how much was that horse armor? By the way, I think it was five bucks. Five dollars. Uh, yeah, I think it was five dollars. And yeah. now. <laughs> We're complaining about paying twenty dollars for which, which is an insane amount of money for horse armor, by the way. Yeah, for but sure. But in but in a modern video game, it feels kind of quaint, <laughs> right? Like that's it. That's all you're charging. Yeah. Oh, only five bucks for that horse armor. Sweet. So yeah, so. I, I I don't know. Sometimes I hear stories like this, and I just wonder how much of this was fabricated behind closed doors to get people talking about the game in some fashion. You know what I mean? I know that's like conspiracy theory sounding a little bit. Uh huh. But there's some part of me that believes, you know what? If we just like hook up this thing, it'll get people talking about it and get people saying Callisto Protocol more. Like now, I guess I guess Glenn Schoolfield is a guy who used to uh, run Visceral Games, which mm-hmm. famously had the uh, Dante's Inferno marketing, where they paid people to be upset about it. I don't remember that. How did that go? I don't either. Oh, you don't remember? It was uh, they were protesters outside of E3 saying Dante's Inferno. You, you know, the developers should rot in hell and stuff. But then it, all those people were like, had SAG cards. SAG because cards? Of, uh, screen actors. They card? were act. They were actors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, so they got oh. they got paid to protest. Or if you remember that uh, that Dead Space Two marketing where they showed a bunch of grandmas Dead Space Two and got them all upset. So yeah, I mean, hey, this would be in the guy's wheelhouse, is what I'm saying. I think your tinfoil hat might be warranted, my friend. Okay. Yeah, see? I, I mean, and this one would be easier to get away with if they actually did kind of fabricate this. So, you know, what if we just like, did this? publicity. Yeah. Publicity draws attention and sales. There's no such thing as bad news, right? Isn't that the old, the old adage? Well, especially when you're a new IP from a new studio. Yeah, you probably right. need all the press you can get. Exactly. I mean, between that and you got the audio series, which you said they did with Dead Space too, right? Did- oh, I don't know. I thought you had mentioned something like it reminded well, you. Well, De- De- well, Dead Space they used to do all kinds of stuff. They would do animated oh, yeah. movies and books and comics books, and they had like a yeah, they had like an animated uh, web series on the Microsoft Store. I remember. 
Oh, there was they, an I, there was a iOS game too. Yeah, there was a yeah, there was a whole little prequel on iOS. Mm-hmm. There was that weird uh, puzzle game, the Dead Space Ignition, that took place in between one and two. Mm-hmm. Oh, where you yeah. like played you played as the guy who gets stabbed in the asylum in the opening of Dead Space Two. And then there was Dead Space Extraction, which was an on rail shooter on the Wii. Yeah, the Wii that game that game was really good. <laughs> um, I owned it and I never played it. Dude, it was great. Was it? And uh, yeah, and and it was fun because the characters that survive in that game were in the Dead Space Two DLC separate. Oh, so they had like their own little storyline going on in the background of Isaac's storyline. Nice, because she, I think she was pregnant with a, a necromorph infected baby. One of the characters. Ooh. Oh, and so, so she got abducted by the unitologists to be studied. We still gonna yeah. do a uh, Dead Space Three together next Halloween. Dude, I'm I'm way down for that. Absolutely, we should totally do that. Yeah, we should stream it or something. We don't. We never stream anything. Anyway, I thought that uh, story was really interesting, Zach. I don't think I need to ask. I feel like I pretty much know, but uh, what story would you like to talk about this week? Oh boy, oh, well, now, now I feel like there's pressure on. But uh, yeah, I think most got to talk about this Splinter Cell remake, right? Mm-hmm. Is, that you, is that what you assumed I was talking about? I did. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, yeah they posted a big old well not a big old but they posted a little twentieth anniversary celebration video on YouTube you saw for for Splinter Cell and they kind of went into Splinter Cell the remake on this um what they say the experience will be identical to the two thousand two title but it wants to implement improvements and features introduced in later Splinter Cell titles as well as smooth some rough edges for example the team wants to give players more opportunities to de-escalate situations when things go awry instead of getting an instant game over. So it's not uh, going to be game. identical. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound at all identical to me. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> that first game was especially was pretty rudimentary. I mean, it's great. Don't get me wrong, but it's uh, you know, there's there's not a lot of complexity to the first one, um, other than you can shoot out the lights, which is always cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game is still an early prototype phase. Um, it'll be a while before we hear about it. Uh, you know, no no release date or platform or anything. No mention of Michael Ironside uh, as of yet. That's a good point. I mean, can they use the original files, like the original voice, fi- like uh, recordings? Well, you think you could, but I feel like a bunch of video game developers and programmers are going to want the, the greatest technical fidelity they can manage, of mm-hmm. course. So reusing the old audio be like, oh, this doesn't sound good enough. Be a lot more expensive now. And I would also, I mean, if they're really, there's probably going to have to be some updates to the storyline. I would think, right? If they're I, if they're going, because I know they said they want it to be the same, but it sounds like they don't actually want it to be the same. I mean, they just said it's going to be identical, and then said it's not going to be identical. So <laughs> yeah, so um, I kind of have a hard time I, believing them when they say it's going to be identical. Um, yeah, yeah. Now I, I haven't played this. So I don't know what you're talking about. Like yeah, if something happens either. in the in the story, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to going back and actually starting from the beginning because you know it's a little bit harder to play. The original Splinter Cell. Now, is that one? Was that one a backwards compatible one that you could play on Xbox? Now, I know one of yeah. them. One, the original one is. I think. I think they all are. Because uh, I was actually talking with one of our listeners who was at my house on um, Friday. Josh Steima was over here. We were doing our movie. I do a movie marathon every every Black Friday. We sit in my basement and watch, you know, an entire series of movies. This year was Mission Impossible, and we got to talking about uh, Splinter Cell, and he was talking about the first one. He said it was really difficult. It was, you know, it was all stealth. It was, you know, you mess up, it's game over. Like yes. You, you're seeing there's no, there's no coming back from it. It's just you got to start over again. Um, well, you're, you're doing things like, you know, infiltrating the house of the president of Georgia. You know, like you can't, there can't be more than one alarm in that scenario. You right. Know? Right. In, in, in real life. And, and because... Back when Tom Clancy was involved, he's saying the re- the realism was taken very seriously. Before they had like aliens and stuff like that infecting. <laughs> yeah, before he before he died, and they said, "Okay, I guess we'll do whatever we want now." Right. But yeah, that's gonna be a long, long ways away. But <laughs> I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll still somehow arrive before the Sands of Time remake. Yeah, Ex Ubisoft yeah. is making remaking a bunch of titles, aren't they? Yeah, they all seem to be in some kind of weird hell. Yeah, they got a lot of drama. There's no, there's no reason, there's no reason this Splinter Cell remake should take this long to make. You'd think, but I mean, are they doing it to the level that you know they did the Resident Evil games? I mean, if they're making it identical, you know, it's not like they're (laughs) they're doing what they did with Resident Evil and Dead Space, right? 
It's identical, but not identical. Yeah. Right. It's anyway. identical. We're only changing everything you can do in the game, but otherwise it's identical. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the core fundamental gameplay of the game is different, right. but it's it's exactly the same. Thing. We still have the lead character named Sam Fisher. Yeah, there you go. What do you think? What do you think the odds are of Michael Ironside, or do you think they use this as a as a chance to recast? Well, I was going to say, didn't they recast in later games? Wasn't he like Kiefer Sutherland? There was one game, I believe they were they recast. No, no, no. Kiefer actor. Sutherland was was uh, Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear, yeah. Yeah, no, there I was one. Eric Splinter... Johnson was the Correct. voice actor that replaced him. Yes, the quarterback from Smallville was Sam Fisher <laughs> in uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist. How it was really do? weird. Poorly. Yeah. But that's uh, to be expected. Those are impossible shoes to fill. I mean, he was also he was also not great generally, like mm. for the role. Because he acted he he moved and acted like a thirty year old. Oh, yeah. Which is weird when Sam Fisher is late fifties <laughs> by that point. So who and would be your like, uh, your dream recasting then if you had to put somebody else in the place of Michael Ironson? I wouldn't. I would I I always thought that you should just you should put Sam Fisher in charge of third echelon and introduce a new spy, oh, and okay. he could be your voice in the ear, and that you can transition to a new generation that way. Yeah, but if they're remaking the original, that's probably not gonna. <laughs> no, I understand that. I'm just saying, like, you should not recast that character. Okay. Much much like you should not recast Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. Sometimes sometimes it's just too interconnected. But maybe maybe there'll be some actor out there I don't even know him of, and they'll just knock it out of the park. You know, I know Tom Hardy is attached to play Sam Fisher in the movie. That'll never get made. I can never... see that. Maybe if he did his American accent. Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. you gotta have that gravelly voice to it, you know? Yeah, totally. I know they're about to put out a book where Sarah Fisher is a splinter cell. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know the character, but. Uh, anyway. Last thing I'll mention is that Dead Island 2 being delayed again. I know we always have talk about delays, but this this game is just delay after delay after delay. I know. <laughs> like I keep forgetting that this game is even coming, but I'm also I, I also know, wasn't too. a fan of the original, so that probably helped. It was originally planned for February 3rd. It's now set for April, uh, so not too much of a delay. But uh, here's the quote from the development team: "So we have some important news to share." So let's rip that Band-Aid off straight away. We are delaying Dead Island 2. The new release date will be April 28th, 2023. The, not, the irony of delaying Dead Island is not lost on us, and we are as disappointed as you undoubtedly are. The delay is just 12 short weeks, and development is in the final straight now. We're going to take the time we need to make sure we can launch a game we're proud to launch. For those of us, or excuse me, for those of you who've been waiting for years, thank you for hanging in there for us. In the meantime... We will be releasing an exciting new trailer and gameplay at the Dead Island 2 Showcase, which will premiere on December 6th uh, on our Twitch and YouTube channels, as well as on the Dead Island website. I can't remember. Are either of you Dead Island fans? No. I had fun with the first one, but I wasn't in love with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was... played a little bit of Riptide, but I didn't finish it. I was amongst uh, that large cadre of people who bought it because of the trailer. <laughs> the trailer was yeah, the great. The trailer was amazing. And then played the game, and it was nothing like that trailer. <laughs> Not even, like, the tone wasn't even the same. Yeah, it was almost comical in nature. Oh, well, yeah, it opens up with Who Do You Voodoo. I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, TCH. That That's song. Funny. It can't, it gets it stuck in your head for years. At least if you're me. <laughs> me too. So, yeah, not much more to say there, but, uh, hey, at least there's plenty of I mean, it's, it's funny. It's funny that it's getting delayed again. Mm-hmm. I'd say just keep delaying it. It could be like, dude, do it forever. Just like let people get it whenever. I also, this game's going to come out. No one's going to care, right? Like, why would anybody, like, who cares about this game? There were some really yeah. hardcore Dead Island fans, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then wouldn't they evolve tradition to Dying Light? I... Same developers as Dead Island. Yeah, but it's still, I still think that's kind of a different game. Yeah. I I, all right. I mean, they have, you know, they both have zombie like enemies that you're fighting that's that's like the biggest uh, similarity i could not think of a well, word there for a second yeah but and both made by Techland, right. obviously right yeah oh. and remember how excited we were for for dying light 2 and then i never played a minute of it 
Yeah, it, it I was excited great. for it, and then it gave me motion sickness, and I couldn't play it. So oh, yeah. I'm like, no. I think I was excited for it until he told me how long it was. Oh, that's what it was. I think. Yeah. Surefire way to get Zach and I not to play a game is five hundred hours. Yeah. yeah. No thanks. Yep. I'm good. And then they, they, they like walked it back. They're like, yeah, but like just the main gameplay will be like sixty hours. I'm like, okay, I'm still not. I'm still unsold. Yep. And then they're like, well, if you just play the main story, it's twenty five hours. She speed run the game. You'll get through it in twenty five hours. Come on, guys, please play our game. <laughs> I'm good, guys. I'm good. Moving on, I would like to remind everybody that we are an independently funded podcast, and if you'd like to help us out, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash the GoCast and sign up for a subscription to help keep the podcast going. We have some new content available because if you are a subscriber, you do get some bonus episodes, and we did finally get caught up on some extra episodes for our Patreon subscribers. Uh, we've got a trade-off episode with Kevin and I where we talked about Link's Awakening and Sonic Generations. Uh, we each made each other play one of our favorite games ever. We also, uh, man, this is months ago we recorded this, but we have our Desert Island, game, uh, Desert Island Games episode with Mr. C.J. Moore. And then lastly, you can listen to CB and I sit down and talk about Little Samson, a uh, classic from the Nintendo Entertainment System era. You won't want to miss that one because, uh, man... I spent a lot of money on that game. If you want to know how much I spent on that game, be sure to listen to the episode. We've also got some extra ones coming up. Uh, Grant Henry is going to be joining us for a Desert Island Games episode. Been looking forward to that. And also, uh, we're going to be doing a Beginner's Guide to D&D episode with our DM himself, Mr. Kevin Hungerford. He's agreed to come talk to us. And if you've ever been interested in doing D&D, but uh, have been kind of intimidated by it or maybe curious, want to know exactly what it means, He's going to help get you started just like he got me started because I never played it before until I met him. So, And then lastly, we're going to do a Games That Aren't For Us episode. Not sure what CB has cooking, but um, he's going to be making me play something. He's been threatening that for quite a while, so stay tuned for that. Again, if any of those episodes or any of our past episodes sound interesting, uh, be sure to uh, go over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. And I got to give a shout out. To Mr. Tim Pollan. He signed up for a $3 per month episode or $3 per month subscription. And also, Mr. Paul Hine this week uh, got tired of his name being missed by one, <laughs> one spot on the giveaways, uh, bumped his pledge from $3 per month to $10 per month. So, uh, fingers crossed for you, man. <laughs> he really wants to win one of those games. So, I uh, really appreciate it. Let's go ahead now and jump into the new games that we've been playing. <laughs> All right, Zach, I, uh, we, we already kind of spilled the beans as to what we're going to be playing this coming week, but uh, there's some few, a few other titles available. What do we got? All right, Sa Sable jumps over from Xbox to PlayStation uh, on PS5, specifically November 29th. Last Days of Lazarus makes its way to PS5 November 29th. Soccer Story, so I think that's made by Americans, uh, coming to PS5, <laughs> PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and Switch, as well as PC November 29th. The Night Witch comes to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC November 29th. Front Mission First Remake comes to Switch November 30th. That is one half of the Front Mission mix coming to Switch. Gundam Evolution is on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, and Xbox One as of November 30th. Yet another Warhammer game, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, releases on PC November 30th. Uh, it was a big uh, Game of the Year contender last year. Inscription comes over to the Switch December 1st. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 Retribution. Big new VR title coming to Quest and PlayStation VR December 1st. And then Midnight Suns, uh, new Marvel game coming to PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC December 2nd. Need for Speed Unbound, uh, sneaking in there, a new Need for Speed game. Coming to PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC December 2nd. And then probably the only game. We care about here. The Callisto Protocol. Coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One and PC December 2nd. Guys, what are you going to be playing from this list? I'm outside of Callisto Protocol? Uh, yeah, I assume Callisto Protocol is a uh, clean sweep, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's for sure yeah. happening. Uh, I will say, don't sleep on Inscription. I'm really glad that's coming to Switch, because uh, I've got that on my Steam Deck. But um, I think it would be a I think it would be better on Switch. Um, maybe, maybe they've done some updates, but that game is more than you think it is. It looks like a simple 
uh, what was that card game where you're like going up the mountain? Uh, it was like it was like a card battler. I can't remember. It's like a, it was like a a roguelike. Man, the game is is the, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire. Thank you. It's like a Slay the Spire style game, but it's got. A lot of moving parts that you're not expecting. It's a really, really clever game. Don't sleep on that one. Yeah, I only I only played like twenty minutes of it, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't I wouldn't even I wouldn't put Slay the Spire in the same conversation at all. It's really it's more it's more like an inner it's more like a puzzle game or a story game. It just happens to start with cards. Oh, you've played Inscription? A little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. I I did not I've been realize interested that. in it, but I just I'm not good at games with cards so I've yeah just been... don't let that deter you because like zach said okay. that's not really what the game's about it's okay it, there, there's a it, that's kind of what it looks like in the marketing is that it's you know that kind of game but there's mm-hmm. there's some interesting surprises that go on in that game so it's uh it's not similar in content but similar in what it's trying to do as uh doki doki literature club okay there you go i like still it, haven't played that and i know i need to Ooh. It's more. I, I know I would love it. I know. Switch. Yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah, I know you always say this whenever you talk about games like that, Alyssa. So there, that is a triggering game. Yeah, I'm just. I've, uh, I've heard. Okay, well, it war- I don't it know. Jeff. I don't know the specifics, but I've heard there's a whole list of trigger warnings. Oh yeah, real real gamers played it before the trigger warnings. Obviously, I wasn't <laughs> trying to say that. I was just looking up. No, I was. I was, I was just joking. That was it, uh, the game. War- it feels like the game, when I booted up the Switch version or whatever, it warns you like three times that there's trickery stuff. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I then, understand. Alyssa, once you do check that out, you got to go back and listen to, we did a spoiler cast on it on Patreon. Okay. Um, That was, yeah, we'll have to get you to listen to that because, man, that game, that game. <laughs> wow. Tremendous. The frog fractions of our, of that, of that year. Yeah. The well, description, yeah, definitely is in the frog fractions world, I feel like. Yeah. Have you played Frog Fractions, Alyssa? No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you got to play Frog Fractions. It's just like a math game. Like, you're, it's a, oh, it's I'm an terrible educational... at math. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, a, it's like a children's educational okay, okay. game. Yeah, you'll learn so I much can do about that. Mm-hmm. fractions and boxing. Yep. Go, uh, go play. I think it's free, isn't it? Or it was It was yeah. free. No, it's free. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. Go, go get it on your PC. Play Frog Fractions. Let us know what you think. Okay, I'll, I'll learn some math. See, anyway, Midnight Suns looks good too. It does. I, I, I think the trailer looks good, and I like Marvel. So I've heard not just from you, Zach, but I've seen people on Twitter also say that like the dialogue is annoying. Yeah, I watched like some gameplay video where they were walking around talking to characters. Like this is, I this is the level of writing that I can't believe Marvel signed off on. It is so bad. Gotta be some of the worst. It's like, uh, you know, I guess I didn't play the new Saints Row, but from the clips I saw, it's not that far off. The complaints I have heard have been like, are these things that people would actually say while there's this dire situation going on? Kind of like your complaints with uh, Gotham Knights. Like, are you going to be giving each yeah. other wet willies and stuff? Like, while well, this is right. Going. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was absurd. It, or like one of the scenes I saw was Blade complaining about how vampires are represented in movies. I was like, first of all, Blade doesn't even seem like the kind of guy who'd be watching movies. Yeah. Let, let alone complaining about how vampires are depicted in them. Let alone, there's an apocalypse almost happening outside. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be just eating some popcorn, talking. It's, a, it's absurd. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Anyway, you, you've been uh, speaking of the apocalypse, my man. What about the old West? <laughs> the evil West. Evil West, Zach, is a game that you have to play as soon as humanly possible. It's got that real 7th generation energy. The real PS3 360 energy to it. That's the exact way to put it, dude. I felt like I was playing... Again, remember how I said I was came, I came from God of War and then jumped into this? Mm-hmm. I felt like I was going back in, in generationally, like control-wise. And I don't mean that to sound disparaging about this game, because it's great. This game is awesome, but it's not great in it, it's it's great because it's trying to come across as an xbox 360 or ps3 game you know what i mean like down to yeah. just the ridiculous yeah. um story that's going on the um slippery controls that just make you feel like you're 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 playing an older game um 
who was it? David did a review for us on a game called TriFox that was, he said, it felt like a love letter to PS2 games. This is that only only one generation ahead. It it feels like that. You've got a big burly character, main character, uh, Renier, I believe is how you say it. Jesse. Yeah, I think that's why I heard in the trailer, Renier. Jesse Renier, Renier. Um, it, it just looks like a Gears of War dude in the old west. It really does. <laughs> this game is ridiculous. Your your sidekick is an African American character with with dreadlocks, like. Like spiky dreadlocks that come out and an eye patch. Um, at one point, you're in the old west, and the level that I just finished recently, it was in a frozen wasteland. Frozen, Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> is it? Does it get frozen in the old west? <laughs> I, I, like, just well, the, when I mean, demons are involved. It. Yeah, uh, but y- yeah, you were basically <laughs> trying to get rid of all of the. You're 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 fighting a war against vampires. They call them ticks. In this game, so like, oh, it's like the lovely. slang that they use for like, oh, we got this nest of ticks, we gotta go take care of, and all this kind of stuff. It's like, it's, it's so good, dude. It's just redonkulous. I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's got that uh, Gears of War energy, man. It does, it does. And uh, the con- the game though itself, the gameplay is a lot harder than I was expecting it to be because if you see the trailer, it looks like it's going to be a Gears kind of thing where you can just kind of mow down all the enemies and everything. But uh, you really have to do a good balance of uh, melee combat and um, firearms or ranged weapons. You can't just you can kind of kite the characters around and just keep firing at them, but it'll take you a really long time. So you might as well just learn how to do it. Um, but the combat is there's there's just so many moving parts, but it never feels so overwhelming. You know how I complained about God of War Ragnarok that I had all these extra moves that I just mm-hmm. never felt like I had to use or never really felt a need to learn because I just got comfortable with the moves I was doing. Uh, this one, you kind of have to learn those things because certain moves work better on certain enemies. And, um, you know, once you start earning extra abilities, it really makes things a lot easier. Instead of just getting some dumb combo that looks really cool, these are actually helpful here, if that makes sense. Um, the combat, like I said, it primarily is melee based. You've got like this giant um gauntlet that you wear on your right arm that he punches with that has electricity coursing through it that the vampires are allergic to or something like that did uh did tesla make it for you um i have not met tesla no but they're in in one of the early chapters you're 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 seeing a demonstration by a scientist that is developing some new technology and there's clearly a tesla coil in the background that is like that is you know doing this demonstration it's it's great it's just yeah i mean that'd be cool if you met nikola tesla it feels like the kind of story that would shoehorn in Nikola Tesla. It's great, dude. But I mean, the story is redonkulous, but still super interesting. Like you, um, <laughs> like when one of the opening chapters. I don't. I mean, can I tell you some of the stuff that happens in this, or is that considered spoilery? I don't. I. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess. Well, the audience. I guess skip ahead a minute, right? I. I mean, it's just. It's just part of the main story. You, you're in the opening chapters. You're chasing after one certain vampire. Um, you take him out, behead him. You're carrying around his head. You actually bring it into, like, the main guy's office, the uh, the leader's office, and just like chuck it on his desk and like, rolls over and sits up like in front of him. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And the vampires, classic, like, yeah, tough guy stuff. Oh yeah, totally. And it just totally feels like one of those um those old cop shows where the where the uh, the hardened cop that screws up and makes mistakes is getting chewed out by the by the chief. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it it just feels like that. Like you gotta turn in your. It doesn't actually say turn in your badge and your gun or anything like that, but it just feels like he's about to. I don't know. It, it's great. Um, sounds great. Does it have that um the energy that games had back in those days where the cutscene felt like a reward? Yes. Almost? Like yes, like, the, yeah. like that's awesome. And and like when a cutscene comes up, they're long enough that I can just kind of sit set the controller down and just kind of enjoy it for a little bit. And yeah. just the dialogue is so over the top. Like it never goes too far. It, it just it gets so close to teetering the line of being too far, but it just it just finds that perfect sweet spot. Um, it's really it's really great, man. But it, but then the level design, the the level design is such that it's all linear, right? There's no open world whatsoever. That's what I'm talking about. And but there's all these like offshoot paths that like oh there's some extra gold and there, you know which is like. That's what I miss. I've kind of missed that gameplay from those from those days. Like I'm just gonna go off the beaten path and find this thing. Oh, it's so good. 
Um, the ranged weapons, you know me, I like I liked ranged weapons. They do, you have a pistol, uh, unlimited ammo, by the way. You never have it, but there, uh, but there yes. is reload. Um, <laughs> the, the pistol, you can actually shoot from the hip, uh, you, or you could just rapid fire, so it actually feels like a short burst machine gun instead of a, instead of a, um, a six shooter, which is great. Yeah, you've got a rifle. Um, the rifle has a mechanic where if another character is shooting at you, um, it brings up a little flashing yellow circle, and if you shoot that, that's their weak point, and it actually does more damage, and it also prevents them from from attacking you ranged. You've got that going on. Like I said, there's so many different moving parts going on. Um, it's almost overwhelming. Um, like, if I'm fighting one enemy, I'm completely fine. But then they start throwing ads at me, and it just becomes I have to manage all of these guys at one time, and I have to figure out a way to lasso this guy over to me to electrically punch him and and then roll out of the way and, and then, you know, kind of bring them all around in a circle, wait for this gauge to fill up so I can electrically pound the ground and make them all, you know, uh, stutter for a second. It, it's, it's just great, dude. It's so good. Zach, you're going to love this game. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so sold. Uh, it's yeah. Just, I mean, I'm sold too. And, and, and just like the over, I, I'm not, I'm, it sounds weird to praise a game for using, language like vulgarity like as much as this game does it does it in a gears of war kind of way though you know what i mean where it's it's almost not offensive because of how much they use it i don't know if that makes sense it's just it's just it's just insane it's the one character in particular just like every other word um is 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 some form of the f word like just he just uses it as a verb as cb says that's good. This character sounds verbose. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. here's the best part, Zach. I'm on chapter six, and I probably put about, I don't know, three or four hours into the game so far. There's only 16 chapters in the game. So this yeah. is going to fall yeah. right in that 10 to 12 or 14 hour sweet spot, uh, which is exactly what I want to hear. I'm, yeah, very excited to just plow through this game. And it's fun. It's Like I said, it's it's tough. It's not like a just, uh, you know, when you when you see melee games, you just kind of assume it's going to be, you know, just button mash this guy, move over to this guy, button mash him. It's not a beat em up. It's very, it's a lot more strategic than I was expecting it to be. You've got weapons that will like electrically bring an enemy towards you, or electrically zip them, zip you over to them. Um, you've got, like I said, the 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 ranged weapons. Um, you've got flying enemies. You've got enemies that burrow under cover you've got some enemies that the only way you can bring them down is if you electrify them and you have to in order to electrify them you have to hit them with melee attacks first to make them weak it's just it it becomes a game of which enemy am i facing and how am i going to take them down kind of like how you talk about in um arkham city you know how like oh here's a shielded guy i gotta i gotta do this song and dance with them you know what i mean yeah yeah i think that's great yeah Melissa, it sounds like we messed up not playing this game (laughs) i know Sounds fantastic. It's 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 really great. I feel like they they were bold to release this game the week after God of War, or the oh, for sure. Like that's a that's a bold strategy, Cotton. But uh, <laughs> I I think it's working for them because word of mouth is is starting to travel with this one, and I feel like people are that are really hardcore about God of War are finishing it up, kind of like I did, and are ready to move on to something else. Waiting for Callisto Protocol, so it might have been the sweet spot, but. I hope it does well, man, because it is it is so highly produced. Like the cutscenes and everything do not look janky. They look really well done. Like there's a lot of money put into this game, it feels like. And it's only a fifty dollar budget title game. So Evil West is a game you guys need to check out. And I know Brian Regals is playing it as well, and he's had a lot of similar comments with me as well. Just I just love the ridiculous nature of stuff just not making sense. Just like old Xbox 360 games. Just the fact that I yes. went through an ice level, just, I'm like, really? There's an ice level? There's a minecart section? It. I had to ride a minecart? <laughs> remember, video games used to be fun, man, remember? I know, man. Oh, they do the really cool <laughs> thing, too, when you finish a battle. Um, I love it when games do this. When you, you know that all the enemies are cleared from the area that you're in, when it does some kind of, like, alert for you, that'd be like... Yeah, I call it a, I call it a wind chime. Sure. Like in Gears of War, they would do that that ominous noise or whatever whenever yeah. you clear it. This one is just like a ricocheted gunshot. You know that? 
Yeah, like an old West yep. sound effect. So whenever you do that, yeah. you're like, all right, this area is clear. That was my... Yeah. Anyway, Evil West. Everybody, please check that one out. That is the only new game we checked out this week, and I cannot recommend it enough. So please, please play that game. All right, moving on. Before we get to our topic, uh, we're going to remind everybody about our social media outlets where you can follow the gaming outsider. Please do so. We've got a great community over at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the GoCast. New members, Logan Honigford. Guess he decided to join the Facebook community now that he won a, ga- a copy of the game. And also Russ Howenstein over on Facebook. Uh, we do have a new member over on Discord as well. It goes by the name of Sayori. Welcome to the Discord community. If you'd like to join that community, there is a uh, link for it in the show notes, and you'll get invited right in. Also, do us a favor. Drop us a review if you get a chance. We really would appreciate it. It helps us get the word out about the Gaming Outsider, and we would like to expand our audience even more if possible. So wherever you listen to the show, look to see if there's a way to review it and drop us a review. We'll even read it on the show. Lastly, our website is thegamingoutsider.com. That's where you can find all of the episodes that we've ever recorded, as well as our written content. We've got uh, reviews, editorials, all kinds of things available there. And I'm not going to read every single name here, but this was definitely catch-up week for, uh, for most of us. We, we re- posted 14 different written reviews on the website, and I highly encourage you to check it out because we have quite a plethora of games on there. The big ones being, of course, Sonic Frontiers and uh, uh, God of War Ragnarok for sure. But there is a just all kinds of uh, games that we've talked about on the show. Please check it out if you get a chance. We would appreciate it. With that, let's go ahead and jump into our From the Outside In topic. The recent release of God of War Ragnarok has quite a few people complaining about the NPCs giving too many hints too early while playing. Zach actually came up with this idea. He thought it would be a good idea to discuss in-game hints and even whether or not we looked up gameplay hints online when we play other games. So I know Zach hasn't played Ragnarok yet, so I'll start with Alyssa. Alyssa, were you bothered by the game coaxing you along to solve some of those puzzles? I know that this is a big thing people complained about. doesn't really bother me because I usually have trouble with puzzles. Mm -hmm. And if I get stuck, I'm like, please tell me what to do. Now, there's been a couple of times where I know what to do, like, say, I need to throw my axe at a red pot to make an explosion happen. And as soon as I look at the red pot, a trace is like, Dad, you should throw something at that pot and make it explode. I'm like, I know. I know, Atreus. <laughs> but other times I'm looking around trying to figure out how I'm supposed to progress. And he's like, maybe we should throw the axe at so-and-so. And I'm like, thank you, child. Thank you. <laughs> So, you're, so sometimes, sometimes you're annoyed, sometimes it's a blessing for you. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what you mean. I, I, I felt like with God of War Ragnarok, I did notice that it happened so quickly. I mean, I would barely get a chance to like get a lay of the land and somebody is trying to give me a hint. Uh, it's, it's, it was kind of crazy. Um, I was surprised they didn't let you adjust that. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot of accessibility options, but not for hints. Right. Like I know some people just want to be told nothing. Um, it seems like something that would be pretty easy to, to shut off. I don't know. The, the thing that bugged me wasn't even necessarily a hint thing, but I, I hate it when games do that where characters will talk to you, like basically chastise you for going off the beaten path to look for collectibles or tre- hidden treasures and stuff. I'm I know. Like, you put it in like, here for me to me. find it. Stop yelling at me. Like the characters in God of War Ragnarok will actually be like, oh, I guess you're pretty thorough, huh? Oh, I guess we could do the main. We could do this main thing. We're we're gonna do a little bit later, huh? Or I don't know. It's just like what you're giving me a hard time for exploring the game you guys made. I don't know. It just drives me crazy. Yeah, I don't have the Ragnarok experience, but dude, that drives me nuts in video games when you, or like it happens in Uncharted. I want to say too, where like you go and explore, like, hey man, get over here. We gotta get this door down or something like that. You know, like like a Call of Duty or whatever. I'm like, guys, you made the game. I'm just playing it. Right. Yeah. Why would why would you as a developer have the characters berate me for exploring your game that you want me to explore theoretically? Yeah. You know, I feel like I'm giving being given a hard time for playing the game. I mean, I I understand it from a realism standpoint because if you were in that situation and there's somebody standing up by the door being like, "Hey, help me move this door." And you're like, "Give me a minute. I'm going to go like explore this like this hallway really quick." Like, right, but in a realism situation, people wouldn't be recording their scientific 
thoughts into a tape recorder anyway. So yeah, yeah. the fact that I'm going to look for one doesn't seem that absurd. That's that's a good point. But I it drives me crazy when games yell at me for playing the game that you designed this way. I just I hate that. Right. It's frustrating. Uh, do you guys feel like modern games give too much help, generally speaking? And I- I'm kind of curious what you prefer. No help, a little help, or lots of help? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I love Elden Ring, right? I, you know, I'm not a... I want as little help as possible. Or, you know, th- to me, the, it feels like the easy solution was already figured out by Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Where before you started playing the game, it you had a different... It had a combat difficulty slider, a puzzle difficulty slider, and a traversal difficulty slider. Mm-hmm. And you could customize it. And if you went hard on the puzzles, you didn't get any hints at all. Right. And that, mm-hmm. and that's good for you know people like me who didn't want it. Or, or even like, I mean, that game was like, if you put the traversal to difficult, like they didn't even tell you where the handholds were. You'd have to just piece it out, like figure it out in the environment. There wasn't like the white or yellow paint that most games have. Right. You know, like, and that's so, that's so cool. And when I heard all the people complaining about God of War, it was just surprising to me because Sony prides itself on its uh, accessibility features, right? You know, that's part of the sales pitch for the Last of Us Part 1 remake is, hey, we, we'll we let uh, disabled people play our game now that you give us $70. But uh, the, so it's, the games are so adjustable. It's weird that God of War doesn't have one that's like, hey, I don't need the hints from the NPCs. Right. You know? Or why would you not just have like, you know, if you press down on the D-pad here, you'll get a hit from the character. Sure, yeah. You know, why Why can't it be an opt-in service? Because, it, but, you know, like, even, like, Sonic is annoying because it feels like every 10 seconds in the top right corner, it's got a little icon that's like, press left if you need a tutorial video for this. I'm like, no, I don't. I've I've been grinding rails for 10 hours now, man. I don't need a tutorial on how to grind a rail. Yep. <laughs> you know, it, it's just frustrating. Trust the gamer, and I know why they're there, right? Because they probably play test, especially God of War, play test it into oblivion to make sure that everybody, including like the people who only play Madden once a year, can get through the game with no with no problems. Because mm-hmm. that's that's who they're they're trying to appeal to the broadest audience possible. It's just weird to me that a game that feels like it appeals to the hardcore gamer as much as God of War does wouldn't also have an option to be like, yes, you can play this as though you are an adult who has played video games before, <laughs> right? <laughs> What about other games, though, like Alyssa, like just anything else that comes out recently? Because when we were kids, you know, games didn't have a whole lot of hints. And, you know, I played games before yeah. the Internet was a thing and before YouTube was a thing. And we couldn't just go in and, and look stuff up. And there was just really nothing. You just kind of had to organically figure stuff out. Or if you if you rented a copy from a video store and it didn't have the instruction manual, you were potentially screwed. You know what I mean? Do Do you feel like... Mm-hmm. Modern games are kind of spoon feeding it a little bit too much, or are you okay with that? I'm pretty much okay with it because most games that you know they kind of tell you, hey, push this button to jump, push this button to shoot, but most of the time that's just at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. And back when we had instruction manuals, I mean, those were the same instructions and that. So it doesn't really bother me unless it just keeps popping up throughout the entire game. That you need to push this button. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I get it. I get it. I know how to play. I plus, just... plus, we also can experiment. You know what I mean? Like, the first I mean, yeah, thing any any gamer does when they're when they're given control of a character in a video game is like test what every button does, right? Yeah, yeah. We all do that. Okay. Oh, there's jump. There's block. There's defend. There's you know, inspect or uh, how do I get to my menu? You know, like we all do that, right? Or am I alone? Mm-hmm. No, I do it as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and Alyssa's right, like, a tutorial is great. It's just when they, every time you get to a long gap and the game's like, don't forget, you can press X twice to double jump. Right. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I understand. Press circle that. to crouch 20 yes. hours into the game. Right. Now, I will say, we've talked about this in the past, too, I wish that games had a refresher tutorial that you could activate if you've been away from a game for a oh, long yeah. time. That would be handy, like, just in the menu. Well, I mean, have a little the game it, the game segment. has a clock in it. It knows the last time that you played the game. How about like if it's been a month, a message pops up and then said, "Hey, would you like a refresher on how to play God of War Ragnarok?" And then just take you to an arena where you just kind of mess around with it without any penalties. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah, that would be dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I would be a big fan of that. I think I think more than anything, it's annoying though is when the NPCs are telling you. 
when you're in the middle of solving a puzzle in Uncharted, and Chloe's like, you know, you should really light that brazier. I'm like, yeah, that's why I have the stick on fire right now. Yep. What do you think I'm doing? Yep. Read the room. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come on, Chloe, read the room. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little much. What about, uh, you know, looking up solutions online? Do you guys ever do that, or do you insist on handling solutions to puzzles or defeating bosses all on your own? I give it several tries, and then if I keep failing at a puzzle or a boss, then I will go online and look. But I have to give it my all before I finally cave and be like, okay, someone has to help me. Mm -hmm. I think I know Zach's answer already. He kind of already answered it. I did? Well, you talked about so Elden Ring. Yeah, well, I, well, I, you know, it, it depends. I'm not going to look things up until usually I'm trophy hunting myself. Mm. But, but the idea that I would assume most people look at if they get frustrated enough at a part, especially like no offense. I mean, I guess offense to, but modern games are kind of so broken on launch anyway. I'm like, I don't know if, is this functioning properly or uh, am I, or is, is this a bug? That's an interesting point. So, yeah. So sometimes it is helpful to look things up to make sure it's operating smoothly, or maybe that's my own paranoia. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, I do have a story to go along with that little thing you just said. When I was oh, playing do, Somerville, do there was a puzzle, and I swear, I was like, this is the only solution, but it's not working. So I looked up online. It's supposed to work the way I was doing it, but it glitched. So the puzzle was actually glitching and not working in the way that it was supposed to. So I had to exit out, get back in, did it the same exact way I've been doing it, worked on the first try. Oh. So... They do glitch sometimes. At a, at a similar thing with Sifu, I remember when it came out, and that game was relatively polished, but we're like a door that was supposed to unlock and all the enemies were unlocked and didn't, you know? So I was just running around for 10 minutes or whatever. So yeah, looking things up definitely comes in handy, I would say. Mm -hmm. Especially like, it's kind of the part of the reason you don't really need the NPCs to annoy you, because if you get frustrated, you can just Google it. Right. Do you guys, like, the developed yeah. this game know that we have the internet? Like... <laughs> Right. Um, Someone's going to make a YouTube video about it. Right. I'm waiting for the day yeah, when they actually like link in the game. Like, here's a YouTube video on how to do it. Like, Remember, that was part of the PS5 pitch. Was it really? Oh, yeah, you're right. Rick, you could do oh, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you could do that with, uh, I think you could do that with Astrobot, where it has like a video that just shows you how to do it. Mm -hmm. But the idea was supposed to, yeah, we would link out to YouTube where the developers could put it in their own videos. Yeah, that, uh, that, that doesn't seem to be happening, though. No, I've not seen anything pop up for me, but... Uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm uh, the opposite of you guys. I'm almost ashamed to admit that uh, I have no problem looking something up. I've I've been known to look up, like as soon as I see a boss, I, you know, pause the game. All right, how do I beat this boss? But not because I'm I'm worried about my abilities or anything like that. It is because I am in a hurry to get through this so that I can get onto the next thing, and my time is too valuable to spend figuring out how to do this. I just want to get through this as quickly as possible. You know, if I had all the time I had when I was a kid, I would love to play Elden Ring and just figure everything out without looking something up. You know what I mean? I don't have that kind of time. Yes. Yeah, I wonder I wonder if my Elden Ring experience would be different if I wasn't in between jobs for four weeks there. Yeah. Yeah, it really allowed me to play Elden Ring the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because otherwise, yeah, I might, I might be a Scott Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I don't, being I, honest. No, I, I mean, I, I do understand why you're doing it. It, it kind of it hurts a little bit to hear that I know. you don't at least try the boss on your own first. But I'm not every time. Like, I, I haven't done it with Evil West a single time. I'm just having such a blast going through that game. So, like, I'm not looking up. At, the only thing I've looked up on that game is how many chapters are there. I wish that yeah. games would do the, like, you're on chapter 6 of 16 when they, or, or you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's the first thing I look up anytime I play a game. Me too. How many chapters Same are there? Here. Yeah. How many levels? So, how many chapters? Just tell me. Just tell me in the game. Don't make me have to go outside. You know. You know. I'm going to be looking this up. Yeah. You know. I mean, I miss games that like when you would come back to it and they would, you would kind of like sort through the chapters. You know what I mean? Like you kind of like page, like you flip a page and like this was chapter one, this is chapter two, and you could go yeah. back and do all the ones that have a big like padlock sign on it you can't get to yet because you haven't played it. But you could always go through there and just see how many chapters there are. Look, you were a PS3, Xbox 360 era game. They did that in that era. You should have done That's that true. if you were going to do that in this game. And I just wish more games did that. 
Well, you know, it wouldn't have a skill tree if it was true to the era. Yeah. Well, you know what? I should have mentioned this when we when we talked about that game. That skill tree, though, it is frustrating, but um, you also do naturally get new upgrades, just like through progression of the story, that significantly alter the way you play. Whoa! So now there, there's a novel concept in yeah, 2022. Yeah. So there, mm-hmm. there is that, but the skill tree stuff in Evil West is actually. Most of it is things that actually benefit you. It's not like a plus whatever to armor or something like that. It's like, right. oh, um, you know, your six shooter now fires seven bullets instead of six. Instead of six, you know, or mm-hmm. if you hit a, um, your rifle has four shots in it. So if you hit a, um, weak spot, then it doesn't cost a bullet. You get that bullet back. You know what I mean? It's stuff nice. like that that actually helps. So I meant to mention that in there because I knew. I think I sent you a screenshot. Of, of that skill tree when I first got yeah. to it. And I was like, man. Because you're like, there's no getting away from it. Yeah. So anyway, back to solutions and stuff online. Uh, the other one you kind of already alluded to, Zach, but if I'm if I'm going for achievements, I have no problem watching a video. Um, I follow this guy. He goes by the name Maka, M-A-K-A. Uh, he does Maka's guides on, on YouTube. And he is very efficient about putting videos together to show you how to get the achievements as quickly as possible without, you know, no mess around. Yeah, no no preamble. I mean, he's uh, he does a little bit, but it's very, very... It's not like, mash that like button. Don't forget to <laughs> yeah, subscribe. No, I, I hate when it's when you look up for, like, where a collectible is, and it almost does a thing when you look up a recipe where it gives you, like, a life story first. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, you know, I first started I playing Mortal Kombat... When I was 15 years old, my dad, but anyway, we, you know, and, and I know people are here for the fatality, but, you know, I've got such a history with fatalities, I just got to tell you about it real quick. Like, no, 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 <laughs> just just show me how to get the trophy, bud. Thanks. Yeah. I hate that so much. Recipes are the worst. Why, why do yeah, people <laughs> think that I want to know about how you serve this to your friends? I mean, I think it's just got to be so they can squeeze an ad, extra ad or two in, right? But they got to get that word so count up to, for SEO, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Gotta fill so they tell you something. some nonsense story. You know, once I served cranberry to my family, but I accidentally used a glass dish instead of my ceramic. <laughs> it was a total snafu. <laughs> Drives <laughs> me crazy. Or, or God forbid, you read a listicle. You know, where someone has like a um a top twenty five whatever, which sometimes are fun to read. Or maybe if I'm doing mm-hmm. research for a topic or something like that. But then there's a whole five paragraph intro before you get to number 25 you know what i mean yeah drives me crazy <laughs> anyway that's what we thought about our topic let's see what the community thought we'll start over on facebook and we're going to start with Alyssa. why don't you read sean's comment there sean coates writes there's a fine line between helpful tips and hand holding and i praise games that do it effectively but i do like games that have the sarcastic helpful tips during loading screens The king of which, in my opinion, is Far Cry Blood Dragon, a game swimming in 80s cheese and self-awareness. If you don't mind, I'd like to list a couple of my favorite hints, in air quotes, from said game. When you catch on fire, scream along with your character. It'll be like karaoke. C4 charges are explosives that will suddenly explode, like a soon-to-be ex with self-esteem issues. You know that last cyber soldier you killed? He just beat cancer and had one week left till retirement. Hope you're proud of yourself. Sniper rifles. A close-range weapon when you accidentally equip the wrong gun. (laughs) That's true. Also, (laughs) I will on occasion consult a YouTube walkthrough if I'm stuck on something. Unfortunately, though, nine times out of ten, every video starts with a typical YouTube e-begging. Smash that like button and check out today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. At that point, I'll quit the game and go read a book. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get a notification every time <laughs> yeah. a new video is posted. Yeah. Uh, if, they, if they start a video like that, I literally back up and go find another one. Yeah, usually the same. Yeah. Can't stand it. Drives me crazy. All right, Zach. Why don't you read the next? Gustavo... You got a couple, actually. What's up? The, you're, you're, Gustavo... the next two are so short. I was just going to say to you go ahead and do oh. both of them. Gustavo Lima said, I like loading screen hints, but that's about it. That's that's nice because you can usually uh, tab through them as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And over at Discord, Rusty just wrote in, hey, listen, <laughs> which might be the, the progenitor of all of this. Right. Navi. 
I, Dude, think about and how annoying she was, man. Yeah. Still a great game, but yes, yeah, so she got annoying. Of course. Where's the accessibility option for that? You know what's funny? I bet, it, I bet if I went back and played that game, though, she'd be a lot less annoying than modern NPCs. Uh, as a guy who did recently replay through a, like a third of that game, nowhere near as annoying. Yeah, and, and, I believe it. And you literally have to like tab through some dialogue. You know what I mean? Like, t- like tap through some dialogue when she talks. Yeah. And the modern stuff is still somehow more, more annoying. Hey, look, <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, it got to a point where you could, you could just uh, ignore her too. Like as long as you didn't click on the thing that she was pointing out, it was fine. Like yeah, who cares? that's true. Hello. And that that was, uh, and when you locked on at me, she had that uh, helpful opt in hint system yeah. where you could tap the button and she'd tell you, "Be like, boy, these zombies sure look like they would hate fire, huh?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Things like that. Kevin Honigford writes, "Ugh." This is what has been annoying me more than anything in modern games lately. I don't mind hints here and there, but when it becomes a constant in the game, it's irritating as all hell. I think it'd be great if you could turn them off if you wanted. The only thing worse is constantly being told where you need to go or what you need to do next when all you want to do is explore. See, I'm not the only one. A lot of modern <laughs> games make Navi a voice I long to hear. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I I long for Navi now. It's absurd. Yeah. All right, Alyssa, what's now? You... Fee F- Fee in Skyward Sword, she can rot in hell. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Every time you take a step, she's got something to say, and you can't. And it's not it's not like Navi where you have to like press the button. She just interrupts you. You're the, you're like dangling off a ledge for your life, and she's like, you know, it, you you would have more stamina if you upgraded. Oh, thanks, Fee. Really helpful. Mm-hmm. Get out of my face. I like. <laughs> borderline despise that game. Like I I give it, I give it a four and a half out of ten, man. That's not a good score. <laughs> it's got great dungeons, otherwise it would be useless. Yeah. That game is not good. No, it's not. And I was so the, pumped for the remake. Like, oh I get to try actually finish this game. Finally. Guess what, guys? I didn't. No, I did. Really great dungeons. They're not worth getting to. Right. Awful. Alyssa, why don't you read the next two since they're both short? Okay. Brandon Lloyd writes, man, I hate being stuck on a puzzle as long as they don't annoy me with it, which I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. And Mark Zemansky writes, I am a fan. Nothing frustrates me more than wasting my time. Point me in the right direction, please. Ooh, conf- conflicting opinions. Yeah, but Mark's you with know- me. Like, I, I, my time is too valuable to, for me to spend scratching my head. Right. Well, you know, if you have... Clever level design, you shouldn't need the characters to tell you which direction to go anyway. I agree. You know, um, I was uh, the the being stuck on puzzles thing that Brandon points out. Uncharted, the first three had a really great thing where you could just look at Nate's notebook if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it would, it would kind of spell out the answer there. But then by Uncharted 4, it got a little way more with like Sam's like, Nate, what are you doing? You got to turn that wheel, you know? <laughs> right. And that was so annoying. Yeah, let me figure yeah. it out, man. I mean, yes, or or you already had the clever the clever fix for puzzles in the first three games where the the notebook had the answer. Mm-hmm. If you wanted if it, if you wanted yeah. it, gave the option right there on the spot. So frustrating. I agree. CJ Moore writes in. I think the amount of help available should depend on the target demographic for the game. The Dark Souls community doesn't want hand holding, and people unfamiliar with the mechanics probably won't enjoy or get very far in it. Making walkthroughs optional is important to me. And certainly don't give me the opportunity to decline a tutorial, then give me a rundown anyway when I decline it. I'm looking at you, Pokemon Gold Mom, with your Pokedex phone and your daylight savings. Dude, I do hate. Oh, yeah. I, I, I hadn't thought about this in decades, but I just had a very visceral memory come to the front of Pokemon Gold's tutorials. So they say you want a tutorial, you say no, and they tutorialize you anyway? She's like, well, I got to yeah. tell you anyway, honey, just so you're safe. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why did you ask? Why did you ask? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word damn I, uh, I don't know I, I'm, I'm a kid in the backseat of the car right now in my mind I like what he said though about the, the, it being a target demographic because you, he's right people that love the Dark Souls games or Elden Ring like you don't want any handhold and don't want any hints right but then also look at the sales numbers of Elden Ring though right 13 million copies or whatever mm-hmm there's plenty of people well, who it seems like hype is a thing. 
Can we can we Definitely. see the trophy, you know, the completion stuff stats for Elden Ring? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's not as high as Spider-Man. Because you, you know where Elden Ring was really popular, like really popular? TikTok. And you really? know how many like dude, every other video for that month or so was was uh Elden Ring. So there like, are still Elden Ring videos being made yeah. and posted on TikTok. I would know. And p and people are so like, oh, I, well, everyone's talking about this. I got to see what the hype is about. I'm gonna pick it up. You're definitely, you know what? You're definitely right about that. So that game definitely was hyped. To all get out. Uh, Green Pal Palkia, Green Palkia on Discord says, I find it helpful when the game provides tips on how to play when I've stopped playing and came back after a while. Look, yeah, what a novel concept, right? But I find it kind of <laughs> annoying when when they provide the same tip over and over and over again. Yeah. yeah. Press circle to defend. Yeah. I, I've i been playing your game for several hours now. I think I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have one more comment. Alyssa. Tim Thane writes, I like hints as long as it's not in your face over and over. I'm looking at you, God of War Ragnarok. I hate when I get frustrated and look something up on IGN or something. And I see how simple it was. Then I get mad at myself for being so dumb. Ha ha. Would much rather have which mo which would much rather have a simple in-game hint. Speaking of Ragnarok, they really were so progressive as far as accessibility options. That being said, it's crazy making that one of them wasn't the option to turn hints off. And why does a head attached to my butt looking backwards? Know what to do before I do, lol. <laughs> Talking about Mimir. Yeah, Mimir. Yeah, Mimir can see everything, even though he's always facing the opposite direction, right? Yeah. I mean, every once in a while, Kratos picks him up and, like, holds him by the top. We'll and, hold him, yeah. And so he can see everything. But when you're doing a puzzle, he's always facing the way my butt <laughs> is. Does he, ha does he have all-seeing eyes like Odin? I don't know. They're, they're glowing. I mean, they yeah, they glow. I have no idea. That could be that could be it. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying maybe there's a narrative reason in there somehow. Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Just, but yeah, he makes a a good point. Why can't you turn them off? And apparently, yeah, that's that, that's the that's just the mystifying part about all this conversation is why is it not optional? Why is there not a slider or something or? Yeah, why isn't there a toggle, yeah. for God's sake? All right. Well, that was a fun topic. Zach, you, thank you so much for the idea. That uh, it, was a, it was a good time. Next week, we are going to be talking about uh, games that we wish we could play, but are not able to. Uh, multiple reasons why we might not be able to play a game. Maybe it's on a platform we don't have. Uh, maybe it is uh, on a, maybe it's an online game that server doesn't exist anymore. Or maybe... Um, it's something that's lost, like, uh, what was it, Panzer Dragoon? Like, you, the original game that's, of that, if you want to buy it, it's like 800 bucks, and you can't even... Panzer, Panzer Dragoon Saga? Right. So maybe it's just... Yeah, and they deleted this. ...not available code. because it's just, it just doesn't exist anymore. So what games do you wish you could play, but for whatever reason you cannot? That's what we'll be talking about next week. So stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this week's episode of The Gaming Outsider is actually produced by Mr. Kevin Honigford. This is his first time doing a regular episode, so hope you enjoyed it. Also, all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemmage and Metroid Metal. His website, as always, is stemmagemusic.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Zach, do you have any parting words before we get out of here? Just said I, I finally started watching Andor, and it is really good. It feels like uh, actual filmmaking, which uh, I haven't seen out of a lot of Disney Plus programming so far. Nice. So, so it feels like it feels like a film, not a product, which is uh, shocking in in modern Disney output for me, anyway. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's it's good so far. I hope it lives up to the hype. I mean, a couple of my friends have said some absurd things. About Andor that I can't imagine it living up to, but um, so far we have not had a mention of the Force, a Skywalker, or a lightsaber, 
and that's big points with me. If we can make a whole season without a Skywalker or a lightsaber showing up, my mind would be absolutely blown. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's actually on Hulu now. I was I was scrolling through Hulu and I saw It said it's available until December seventh on Hulu. So, so it, it's, like it's a only trial. the first two I think it's only the first two or three episodes. Though. Oh, okay. Oh. But it makes sense because Disney owns Hulu, so why would yeah, get a little cross brain promotion going on there. Give them a taste, try to get more people to come over and subscribe get, to Disney. I, yeah, get get the bundle, the Hulu Disney bundle. Right. Ah. Oh man. You can isn't it just silly not having both? I mean, you could be watching this show, and you get here. ESPN as well. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you think maybe does that mean that Andor is not doing very well? I don't know. I, mean, I, I hear. I hear. People I've heard talk. nothing but glowing things yeah, about it. Same. Well, of course, yes, but we're also on Twitter or the internet. That doesn't really count and for I, real numbers. I did hear it's already been renewed for second season. Yeah. Well, they announced it as a two season, yeah, twenty four episode show. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I not obviously online. It's the talk of the town, but that doesn't mean anything really, right? You know, yeah. So I'm just, uh, I'm just curious if that's what that means. Because cool. if they're putting it on Hulu, it either means it's doing exceptional or it's doing very poorly, right? That's a good point. That's the only it reason could, you, it could go either way. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be yeah. one of those two extremes. All right, Alyssa. What about you? Any uh, parting words or recommendations? I finally watched an anime that came out way back in 2006, which doesn't feel that long ago, but that was 16 years ago, called Ergo Proxy. I know a lot of people already heard about it. I'm just, I just got on the bandwagon. It was fantastic. It's very much a sci-fi anime that if you're a fan of things like Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, Akira, this will definitely appeal to you. It's one you have to constantly keep your eyes glued to because it's a very complicated story. There's a lot of themes and messages going on, but they also make it fun. They're, like, there's just one episode that is a game show episode with the characters. Hmm. So it goes from being really serious to being silly and then back to serious. But I really like this show. It's done. It was only, I think, 23 episodes long, but it was really, really good. And if you're into sci-fi and that kind of stuff, definitely recommend it. If you haven't already seen it, I am very late to the party on that one. Nice. As for me, I uh, haven't pitched my other podcast in quite a while, so I'm going to recommend that uh, if you are a Green Bay Packers fan, please check out my other podcast, the Packers Fan Podcast. We record the uh, day after every uh, regular season game. So it is PackersFanPod.com. I would love it if you came and checked it out. Uh, Wayne, my co-host, is a little bit uh, more optimistic than I am. Uh, the dude in 10 years has predicted the Packers to lose one game ever. <laughs> Every other game he predicts they're going <laughs> to win. So he's, uh, he's, uh, but he's a lot of fun. He's a really good guy. So uh, if you like football in general or maybe the Green Bay Packers, please check it out. I would appreciate it. Uh, he puts a lot of work into that one as well. All right. Zach, Alyssa, thank you so much as always. Uh, it's it has been a pleasure. Two weeks in a row, same crew. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got consistency. I know. Look at that. <laughs> well, until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Zach Parkerson and Alyssa White, and we are the Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you.